In this short series of videos, we're going to be thinking about some of the calculations which all of us who are taking a course in molecular biology will have to do at various stages during our careers. Before we get into the details of that though, let's begin just taking a step back and thinking a bit about uh, units and powers that are involved in these calculations. One of the things about molecular biology is that we're often dealing with very small quantities of materials. And as a result of that, we tend to be thinking about either volumes or amounts which are in negative powers of 10. So, for example, a typical volume we might be using might be a milliliter, that's 10 to the minus 3 litres. So the, the, the component uh, milli means 10 to the minus 3. We might have a, indeed a smaller amount, a thousandth of that, 10 to the minus 6, and that would be micro, and then 10 to the minus 9, which would be nano. Now, it's important as we think about this that we reflect on a number of different features here. So, milli has a lowercase m, and it must be a lowercase m. Micro, because milli's already taken the m, has the Greek symbol mu, sometimes drawn, uh, but you should try and avoid this if you can find a, a mu symbol, sometimes drawn as a u instead, and nano then has a, an n, lowercase n. It's important though here to also notice that when we're thinking about molar, which is a concentration term, the m for that is a capital, and it must be a capital. So millimolar, would be lowercase m, capital M. And it's important that you distinguish between those if you're handwriting something, or indeed if you're doing it on a computer. So that's some of the powers of 10 that we might need to think about. Now, the term that I've just mentioned there, molar, one molar as we would say it, you're probably used, if you've been trained appropriately in the use of the um, SI units, is to think of that in terms of being a mole per decameter cubed. Similarly, one millimolar would be one millimole per decameter cubed. One micromolar would be one micromole per decameter cubed. So each of these steps here represents a dilution, a, a, a reduction in the volume of a thousand fold. So we've got a thousand times as um, less in each of those as we move to the right. Now. This unit, the decameter cubed, is the appropriate SI unit, but we don't tend to use that in molecular biology, and there's a, a, a good reason for that which we'll come on to in a moment. So when we do think about one molar, what we tend to be thinking about is that in terms of litres. So one capital M, one molar, means one mole per litre, and a litre is the same as a decameter cubed. Now, the reason we tend to think about litres is actually, again, as I hinted just now, the volume we're using is, 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 very, is likely to be very much smaller than that. We're unlikely to be using litre volumes. We're more likely to be using millilitres or indeed microlitre volumes. And the beauty of taking the unit as being a litre, a millilitre or a microlitre is actually one molar is one mole per litre, but it's also one millimole per millilitre and one micromole per microliter. And if you look at that, it makes logical sense. We've reduced here the volume to a thousandth of the original. So we've gone from a liter to a milliliter. So a milliliter is a thousandth of the volume. And if we imagined that we had a, a, a molar solution, so one mole in a whole liter, if we would take a thousandth of that, if the, provided the, the mixture was appropriately uh, spread evenly distributed through it, then each milliliter ought to have one millimole present in that. And again, similarly, one converting from milliliters to microliters, the change there is a factor of a thousand. So the change here is a factor of a thousand as well. So one molar means one mole per liter, it also means one millimole per milliliter, and it then also means one micromole per microliter. And we can think of that as well in terms of our other uh, 
concentrations here, one millimolar, we've said it's one millimole per litre. It's also then one micromole per milliliter and one nanomole per microliter. So again, we're going down here by a step of a thousand. And so we have a thousandth of the amount present within that. It just happens to be that we've started with million. Now we've got micro. And similarly, one micromolar would be one micromole per litre. It would be one nanomole per milliliter and it could be one picomole per microliter. So those are the sorts of units that we're thinking about. OK, now I know that some people conceptually find that difficult to think about. So let's take a, a more familiar example and let's think about the conversion of kilometres into metres. So we are familiar with the fact that uh, a metre is a thousandth of a kilometre. So in terms of the change that's taking place there, we've got a thousand fold less in the unit. A kilometre going to a metre is a drop of a thousand in terms of the unit. And so as a consequence of that, because we're talking about the same amount, we've got a thousand times as many of those in comparison. So one kilometre is a thousand metres. The unit has gone down by a factor of a thousand, therefore the amount has gone up by a factor of a thousand. And that's something we, we conceptually get. Now that's actually the same as when we're thinking about the conversion of a litre to millilitres, for example. The unit has gone down by a factor of a thousand, so the amount goes up by a factor of a thousand, and indeed as well in terms of um, concentration. So millimolar to micromolar is a thousand fold drop and therefore the number goes up by a thousand fold. Okay, so those are just some, some things to bear in mind there. Now let's think a bit about the interconversion between units. Hopefully over time it's something that will become second nature to you, but let's just take a relatively simple example to start with. So imagine that you were presented with 3 times 10 to the minus 5 molar. Now we don't, in molecular biology, like to have too many powers of 10 kicking around, and we certainly don't want to see zero, uh, zero, 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 lots of decimal places of zeros being shown. So rather than doing that, we tend to try and change the unit. So in this example, uh, 3 times 10 to the minus 5 molar, what would that be in micromolar? Well, we can approach that in a couple of logical ways. Firstly, we could think, well, 3 times 10 to the minus 5 molar is going to be the same as 3 times 10 to the minus 2 millimolar. So our unit, as we indicated just now, has gone down by a factor of a thousand. So the number has gone up by a factor of a thousand. You need to remember that uh, 10 to the minus 5 converting to 10 to the minus 2 is an increase of a thousandfold because we're talking about negative numbers. So what we can see then that 3 times 10 to the minus 2 millimolar, uh, we were asked to work it out in micromolar and so that would be 30 micromolar. Now if you're not quite sure what ballpark we're thinking about, then set down some parameters for yourself. And I know that some students get confused as into which direction they're heading. So remind yourself that 1 times 10 to the minus 3 would be millimolar, 1 times 10 to the minus 6 would be micromolar. And so if we've got something that's 3 times 10 to the minus 5, we're somewhere between those two. Now one way conceptually you might like to think about that is to say, OK, well, if 1 times 10 to the minus 6 is a micromolar, if I had 3 of those, 3 times 10 to 6, that would be 3 micromolar, but I've got 10 times as much as that, and so that's 3 times 10 to the minus 5 would be 30 micromolar. As we'll see with, with some of these sorts of calculations, the, the way one person likes to think about it may be different to how you'd like to think about it, but sometimes... Uh, somebody bringing a different perspective can can give a, 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 a introduce a tool which you're able then to use for yourself. 
Now, just before we wrap up in terms of an introduction to units and powers, just to say that there is more than one way that we can describe concentration. We've been talking so far about m having molar solution, and that's certainly one way which you'll be thinking about solutions. But there are other things as well, other descriptions. So first of all, we can think about weight per volume, which is sometimes shown as W slash V. And so, for example, uh, if we had a solution of bovine serum albumin, it might be described as being 50 mg per mil. So there are 50 milligrams of bovine serum albumin per mil. We do also additionally sometimes see a percentage solution, and this could be also quoted as weight per volume, but it might also be volume per volume. So for example, if, we, if we're thinking about ethanol, which is a, a liquid already, we might describe a solution as being 80% ethanol, V for V. Or glucose, which started out as a solid, we might describe that as being 20% uh, glucose, W for V. Now, in terms of those units, V for V, 1% would mean 1 milliliter out of our total of 100 milliliters would be our particular substance. Uh, so the rest of it essentially would normally be water. So it would be 1 milliliter of our substance in 99 milliliters of water would be a 1% solution. And similarly, a 15% solution would mean 15 mils out of our 100 mils was the, the particular substance that we we're interested in, and the rest of it would likely be water. In terms of weight per volume, 1% means 1 gram in total volume of 100 mils, and 15% would mean 15 grams in a total volume of 100 mils. So that just sets out some of the potential things that we could be thinking about in terms of ways of describing the concentration of a solution. So in the next video, we're going to think a bit about uh, mole calculations, which I know is something which uh, some people uh, find awkward to do.